Here's a short video with some of my tips and tricks for solving questions to do with statics. So static moments. No matter what the question, we always begin by labelling the forces on the diagram correctly. We need to think carefully about which way friction is going to be acting, if it is involved at all, and it can sometimes be helpful to think why is the object stationary. So for example, typical question being that we have a ladder resting against the wall. Why is the ladder stationary? Well because it's not slipping down the wall. And if it's not slipping down the wall, what stop it from doing that? Well, friction must be stopping it from doing that, which must be acting upwards. Likewise, the ladder is not slipping away from the wall, so friction must be acting inwards to keep it from happening. Or we have other questions where we have a sort of a flat surface with a rod, and there's some form of tension pulling up from this direction, but yet this rod is not moving. Well, why is this rod not moving when a tension force is being applied towards the left-hand side? Well, that must be because friction is acting towards the right-hand side. When we're answering these questions, there are always two things that we start with, the nice and simple resolve horizontal and resolve vertically. Every question can be decomposed into this sort of thinking, so start by resolving vertically and resolving horizontally. Even if we have no idea how to finish the question, there's easy marks that can be gained from doing this. Next, we select a sensible point to take moments about. Now, it's important to emphasize here that that point doesn't always have to be on the rod itself. For example, going back to my ladder, one of my favorite points to take moments about is this point up here, which we often refer to as the point P, the one that's vertically above the bottom of the ladder and horizontal from the top of the ladder. This can be very useful as it completely eliminates the normal reaction at the top and the normal reaction at the bottom of the ladder. You can, when dealing with exactly three non-parallel forces, use a force triangle, but don't feel like you have to. Several textbooks spend quite a long time getting you to do work with force triangles when really it's not strictly necessary. Yes, sometimes it can be much faster to solve a question using that method, but if you are looking for a routine that you can apply to every single question, resolve vertically, resolve horizontally, and take moments. On this slide is pretty much every sort of conceivable question that you could imagine with static. So we'll start from the top left and work our way down to the bottom right. So first of all, thinking about a thrust question, and it's important to remember when we're looking at all of these sorts of things, we are only ever concerned with forces that are applied directly to the rod. So for example, with this question, I know that there's going to be thrust from this bar that's here. Now thrust acts in two directions, outwards, at both ends, so there is going to be some sort of force that's acting on C, but I don't care what that force is, because I'm only concerned with forces that act directly on the rod. The second question is very similar to thrust, it's just tension acting in the opposite direction. Uh, the next question again very similar, we've just got our forces at a slightly different angle in this case. All three of these top scenarios can be solved using force triangles. These are the only sorts of questions that you can solve using force triangles because you've got exactly three non-parallel forces. Underneath there are three questions that look at how friction can be involved. So where we have a rod resting on a peg that's not moving, sometimes there's friction acting at both points, so I've indicated here clearly how the friction would act. Again, it's important to think about why the object isn't moving. If there was no friction, the object would probably want to try and slide down in this direction, but it's not. What's preventing it from happening? Well, friction from the peg, if the peg's not smooth, and friction from the floor, if the floor's not smooth. Likewise, with tension and friction, we've got uh, a rod that's being pulled in one direction and it's not moving, uh, so we must have friction acting against it on the floor. And again, our ladder situation, which we've been over uh, in the previous slide, and this is always how friction would act on a ladder. No matter where somebody might stand, no matter what else might be involved, if we've got a ladder lent against a wall, friction is always acting as shown. Force triangles. Force triangles can be created and it's important that we get our forces labelled accurately on our diagram before we can use a force triangle. For instance, this diagram is incorrect. Now we can see that it's incorrect because if I was to take moments about the point D, I would only have clockwise moments involved here. 
and because the system is in equilibrium I cannot only have clockwise moments I must also have anti-clockwise moments otherwise I would not be able to have this balance of clockwise and anti-clockwise moments so this is how the diagram should be drawn correctly and if we're to use a force triangle the idea is that each of the forces will join together end to end to form this perfect little triangle it then allows us to use sort of trigonometry or the sine rule, cosine rule, etc., to find out various missing forces or angles. The important thing to remember here is where you might end up using the sine rule at some point. The sine rule will only ever give you an acute angle. So you then have to use your diagram and your understanding to interpret whether or not you should be using the acute angle or an obtuse angle. Again, just another reason why I think it's often safer to forget about trying to do things with force triangles and just use resolving horizontally, vertically and taking moments. The only other thing for me to do now is to go through a few, uh, go through a few worked examples so I'll upload some of these later on.